Welcome back to the next episode of Theory of Training. Thanks for joining us again. We said we'd follow on a little bit from the previous episode of Squat Every Day. And this is another thing that you can't do and shouldn't do in your squat <laughs> training. Um, we felt it was appropriate to keep going with the trend. And today with is... With the trend. With the... Shut up. <laughs> with, um... Today's video is on the subject of uh, my phone falling out of my pocket. Is on the subject of why you can't do 5x5 five five every day. Or every time you squat. Or on every lift. So this is... Speci- we're going to talk about this in the context of squat. But it applies to basically any other lift you do in terms of 5x5. Uh, five five. So, so often people are like... Um, can I just do 5x5 five five every day or how often should I do 5x5 five five during the week or but what do I do with my 5x5 five five? and it's mostly a kind of beginner fault in terms of uh, programming and their understanding of how programming works and we're just going to run through Do you know why you think they like it? Why do you think they like it? Because 5x5 five five is they get to a heavy enough weight where they're like oh it's not 1RM territory but it's still big weight so people feel good about it in the gym because they're not squatting really light weights for high volume. But then they're also getting a certain amount of volume where they feel like they're getting a bit of a pump. Yeah. I think it's in like that butter zone. Um, the other reasons people like it is because Clarence did it every day for ages. It did take on kind of a like a, a, a cultural aspect. Like it's kind of yeah. like a, an urban myth that 5x5 five five was something that you should do all the time. Also, somebody commented on one of the last videos being yeah. like, oh, Clarence squatted every day for years. And they're like, oh yeah, Clarence has no knees. It did fuck up his knees forever, basically. <clears throat> they yeah. still give him trouble. So uh, the f- we're going to kind of run through different sections of why you can't do 5x5 five five every day. And the first section of that, and the first one to kind of talk about it, is that you cannot actually get enough volume for a couple of different reasons. Yeah. Now, the first reason, so you think 5x5 five five is actually a lot of volume, and it, it, is, um, it is where you will spend kind of the bulk of like 25 reps per session at a significant intensity is where you'll spend a lot of your time training but it's not where you can and should spend all your time no and certainly at the start of a training cycle uh 25 reps is not enough you know like if you're if you're looking at building some work capacity uh building some general strength you're not at a very at the very start of a cycle like that's probably where you'll end up at the end of like a, a work capacity stage in a strength uh in strength training like you're very rarely going to start with five by five. Most of the time you'll see people starting with six sets of eight, six sets of 10 with really low intensities, then gradually increasing the intensity until that you reach a certain level of intensity. Then we drop the volume a small bit, raise the intensity, drop the volume a small bit. So that's like... Way to give away all our secrets. <laughs> so if you, if you don't start, if you start your macro cycle, so if you run through the kind of... Um, linear progression of your training so in the first kind of one to two weeks or depending on how long you draw it out for and how long you're able to draw it out for you're going to be looking at somewhere between 80 to 120 effective reps so as in yeah. your your hardcore working sets so the reason you do that is you want to build some you want to build just some good old-fashioned muscle mass so you want to add a bit of muscle tissue and kind of stimulate growth and to be honest i think one of the biggest things people don't do in their training is they don't do enough high volume at periods of time throughout the training so they skip because it's it is hard like doing four sets of ten five sets of ten doing it for two or three weeks doing sets of eight and it's not like it's not fun no, it's like not lifting light weights isn't fun so like a lot of times people don't a uh, uh, incorporate that aspect of programming into their training and they miss out on a lot of key factors so the first one is they don't have any work capacity to tolerate the heavier intensities later in training so yeah. the heavier intensities at a moderate volume later in training is something you're not able to tolerate because you didn't build up this kind of work capacity and that ties into the kind of cardio for strength training we talked about yeah but also you haven't built some extra muscle tissue and which is the tissue is the is the one that is doing the work you know that's the one contracting so you need to add a bit of muscle mass so mass is kind of like uh cross-section area your muscle is is related to like potential strength so you need to add a little bit of cross-sectional area yeah definitely and like so if you've gone and watched the aerobic capacity video where you talk about the importance of having aerobic capacity for strength training or sorry if you haven't gone and watch that go and watch that now because i think what we're what we've kind of brushed over what gurf said in the last 15 seconds is covered in 20 minutes of a video uh moving on from like the other things like the work capacity or like kind of certain aerobic capacity and obviously the hypertrophy effect of slightly high, higher volume strength training you also then have the opposite side of that of you never reach high intensities 
Um, and then, so like, if you're never at a low enough intensity to do a lot of volume at 5x5, five five, you're then doing too much volume at 5x5 five five to never get to high intensities. High intensities is where you'll see the big changes in actual strength. So just pure strength and then also your speed strength, your strength speed and your power output. So one of the important aspects to understand about strength training is that each percentage range, so each kind of like under 70%, 70 to 85 percent 90 percent and then like 100 percent plus all of these percentage ranges are actually a skill in themselves so strength is a skill and these subsets of your strength training are specific skills in yourself okay so if we spend all our time doing sets of 10 we get really good at doing sets of 10 and then we don't get good at doing anything else so yeah. we've, we've learned the skill of doing very high reps and then nothing else so we spend a lot of time same with doing five by five if we spend all our time doing five by five in the squat we end up getting very good at five by five. So a lot of times you see people say something like, I can do, and this comes up all the time. So they'll say, I can do 150 for a set of five, but I can't, I miss 160 for a single. Yeah, yeah. So what, what that's happened there is that you have basically neglected the skill of doing heavier weights. So you've gotten so good at doing sets of like 25 reps at a very heavy weight, but you haven't been able to translate this over into your 1RM because you haven't yeah. practiced that skill of moving on through the reps and practicing heavier weights and slowly acclimatizing yourself to heavier weights until you've kind of developed that skill of pushing and grinding through heavier weights. Yeah, like, so as Gareth was saying, like everything sits on a, on this curve known as a force velocity curve. So uh, what you're doing when you stick at five by five is you're sticking at a certain point on the force velocity curve. For people who are relatively strong um, at five by five, that's gonna be around 75%. If you see people who are getting to 90% of their 1RM uh, with a 5x5, five five, so say they can do 180 kilos for 5x5 five five and then 200 is their 1RM, they've deviated vastly away from what you'd consider to be normative ranges for like a 5x5. Five five. What you'd want to see is in a good training program is that every aspect on that force velocity curve. So if you take really, really high force is is very slow velocity because that's 100% of your 1RM isn't going to move fast, then 90% of your 1RM will move will have slightly higher velocity. So it's basically this curve as you go all the way down along and then 50% is going to move very, very quickly. What you want to see in like a well-rounded athlete or in, even in athletes who are highly specialized, but in their prep phases or at the beginning of a, a macro cycle is they'll have training which approaches each of those points on the force velocity curve uh, or they might have training which kind of tries to bring up one of the weaker aspects on that when you just stick to a program like a five by five program and you might do it two times a week or three times a week you're never attacking any of the other points on the curve and you might say uh, so like if you're training in a crossfit gym you might say oh i'm doing wads i get plenty of volume in my legs like wads or or your kind of aerobic work where you're doing wall balls and stuff that uh, like that occupies a certain area on that curve but it still only occupies one area on the curve whereas if you have like a really well-rounded approach to your squat training or approach like this works with this is the same for deadlifting this is the same for pressing if you have a well-rounded approach with how you train everything all of those points on the curve are going to slowly come up and it's like we use the the phrase all the time like a rising tide uh, lifts all boats but it's you want to just get your small wins at each of your steps and bring everything up so the last or sorry the second last one the last one will be kind of injury risk but this one the stagnation is one of the biggest kind of aspects that you can encounter in doing five by five every day so we have kind of mental stagnation and then we have like uh, physiological adaption stagnation. So mental stagnation is is fairly obvious and self-explanatory. If you're trying to do, so a good heavy set of five by five could take you, and it has taken me up to like a, an hour. Yeah, to yeah. And oh, like, definitely. And sometimes that's from, I am I need to rest more between sets. I need up to five minutes rest between sets. But sometimes I just need the, not I need to psych myself up for that set, or you'll need to psych yourself up for that set, or you need to mentally prepare for how this third set of five is going to feel in this fourth set of five and this last set of five you know you've got a they are mentally very fatiguing and no nothing is more i think in terms of those rep ranges one to tens fives 
and twenties are on a different level. <laughs> so the fives are because fives are low enough rep ranges that you're close to heavier weights. The weights are heavy, but you can still grind through sets of five, and you can grind through a lot of sets of five. Yeah. So it is mentally very fatiguing, and if you're trying to do that all year round. And the thing is, because you've developed this skill of doing five by five very well, you can actually get up to very heavy weights. So like we're saying, you can get up to winning, like some people get up who are squatting under 200 kilos, can do something like within 30, 20 kilos of their one RM or their current one RM. They can do an awful lot of five by five at that. And so that weight is really, really heavy. So mentally you are hyping yourself up all the time because you're at heavier weights. It is very difficult. And so you're not like you, you are putting so much psychological stress on your training because you're doing this so frequently that it, it is rep ranges provide a different kind of stimulus and a different kind of mental aspect so it allows kind of um, a washout period yeah. when you're doing different reps so you kind of have a different kind of hype tens feel uh, hard but they don't feel heavy fives are heavy and they feel hard and then ones if you have done it appropriately feel good or you're getting close to max so you have a different kind of stimulus one rep is so different to five reps yeah I think like the five like just five reps in in things tends to be like the 400 meters running it's not slow enough or sorry it's not long enough where you're running slowly and then it's not fast enough where or it's not short enough where you're just sprinting so it's it's basically an all-out run for 400 meters and i think that's like it's the squatting equivalent of that uh the other thing with stagnation in the five by five is like Gurf spoke about it being mentally very very draining to do five by five continuously and it definitely is but on your CNS as well, like we've talked about that you can go really, really heavy. Like people think about CNS fatigue uh, for deadlifts and they think about it for squats, but only in higher rep ranges. Like the reason we don't think about it for lower rep ranges is because the weight's so low. So it's this thing again of, of we're in between a rock and a hard place. We're doing enough volume where we're really breaking down muscle tissue uh, or we're getting some breakdown in muscle tissue. But then we're also at an, a high enough intensity whereby we're really doing some kind of lasting fatigue to our nervous system. Uh, then, like, the kind of last thing I would put in, in with stagnation is that a lot of people who aren't just involved in strength training, so they might be playing a field sport or something like that, they only have, like, if you have an off-season of two and a half months, that's a long time for an off-season. And just doing five by fives really, really limits you in that because you're trying to draw an adaptation. Like, it's using a shit hammer to try and bang in a nail and you have to bang in the nail really really hard like there's much more intelligent ways of approaching your squatting five by five is great when it's in there with other methodologies and other rep ranges but i just wouldn't use five by five for everything so like that you kind of get when you move to different rep ranges you get kind of uh it's like a new exercise like a new stimulus so when you get to like tens these are like a new stimulus in your body fives are different stimulus and so eventually you kind of get to that homeostasis of just doing five by fives and you that's kind of physical stagnation the physiological stagnation of that you're not changing your stimulus so your body doesn't feel like it needs to force any new adaption so if you're doing five by fives all the time or you can do this for any rep range really you your body puts the necessary resources in to making sure you we can do five by five as much as possible but then no more so when we don't force a new adaption by increasing weights and lowering reps or going back the other way whichever there is like reverse uh, yeah. linear progression but it doesn't work but it's there in the, like the kind of theory <laughs> but it, it, that until you kind of force in new adaption you're not forcing this new adaption on your body like you're not putting in a new stimulus so you've got to force it like you've got to make it happen and that just doesn't happen when you stick to the same rec ranges yeah like what I do if if you wanted to really see a good side by side comparison would be I would run five by five for eight weeks I'd run it two days a week and you might add two and a half kilos each time I'd then run an alternative squat program for eight weeks two days a week and see what fluctuations in volume and intensity will do and see what your outcome will be like at the end of it like that's only four months that's not a long time for training and then the last aspect to look at is injury risk of five by five so if you have mental stagnation and physiological stagnation and you are you are pushing heavy weights all the time because the five by five weights, as we mentioned, can get heavy, your risk of injury comes from being kind of fatigued. So you're not mm. going to pay as much attention or you won't be able to pay as much attention. So you're more likely to have kind of an acute injury from a stupid mistake, a uh, breakdown of form. And if you don't kind of lighten the volume and move on to heavier weights. So while you may be increasing weights, you would think maybe the injury risk is higher, but you're also lowering the volume. So if you move smartly through your training, 
you are giving yourself a break from volume and volume and intensity both carry their own individual risks in terms of what kind of injury they can have if you overdo one or the other so if you when you reduce that volume and you move up in intensity you're negating the risk you would have got from high volume at heavier weights and obviously heavy weights then have their own potential for injury but you're kind of um, allowing a recovery from injuries that may have occurred from volume and then pushing it new in the move into new intensity new so areas of injury yeah you're pushing a new kind of injury and the less time you spend somewhere the less time you're likely to get injured you know so you've got to be very smart with which way these goes but that like that sounds funny you know when we're saying uh oh like you're going into new realms of injury or there's different forms of injury but when you look at repetitive strain injuries which is what a lot of training is like besides your your kind of acute discrete injuries you get from making a mistake or from some sort of fuck up uh like avoiding repetitive strain injuries to a certain point is good motor patterns uh not being excessive with the load but it's also just moving loads around and moving intensities around so like just sticking to this one kind of reps by sets is a mistake and you're just you're leaving a lot of you're leaving a lot of the low hanging fruit behind you basically i think like one of the big takeaways i i give at the end of this would be we always talk about like five by five being a great marker. So for a lot of people who start training, they'll always think about like, oh, your one RM is what you want, or you want just to hit this weight and see how many reps you can do with it. Uh, and then five by five becomes a nice marker because it's a small bit of volume. It's a small bit of intensity and it's like a training goal. Uh, but what I'd say is like, if you want to improve your five by five, and if this is one of your kind of stepped out short term goals, you want a bigger five by five, you need to look at that making that bigger with everything else coming up as well. So not just saying, uh, geez, yeah, it'd be good for my squad if my 5x5 five five was fat, was bigger. Uh, don't go and attack that by doing just 5x5s five five for 10 weeks. Go and attack that by making your squat in general stronger and then see what your 5x5 five five is. Yeah, like a good 5x5 five five session is very rewarding in terms of like how you feel after it and you feel like you've conquered something fairly significant because you have if you had a new 5x5 five five PB. It's a great Friday night session. It's a great Friday night, yeah. You, know, like, is, yeah. Yeah, you finish the week, yeah. you want to do something difficult, yeah. but not that fucking difficult. And like it, you just feel good after it. And you have that time to do it, you know, to commit to it. Um, it I think of all the rep kind of sets and reps, it is one of the most enjoyable ones to do like as tens yeah. like you don't geez everyone hates tens it's the most kind of <laughs> legitimate marker of progress is uh in terms of like sets and volume kind of markers so tens can be very finicky multiple sets for tens are even more finicky mm. and meaning even less um one rm obviously is the ultimate one but then after that i would say something along the lines of either five rm or five by five adding 10 kilos to a legitimate five by five is a good marker of progress yeah. as long as you're being smart and kind of enacting all the information we just gave you there so i think that kind of ends that one yeah if you're looking for a squat program uh seek strength.com wrote down your back squat program i think it's safe to say it's one of the best squat programs on the market yeah i'm just gonna you know i just it's definitely the best one we wrote <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching guys thanks if you have um any suggestions you would like to see for theory training just let us know in the comments um comments really help with the algorithm and it really helps you press a like and a comment and if you know algorithm the like the how youtube prompts it into people's oh, like fuck off. yeah so if you like and comment Mad. and obviously subscribe as well is great but uh, if you interact with other people's comments as well like you, you it helps us an awful lot yeah there was some good comment back and forth on the last one yeah there was good ones yeah squatting is uh it's i'm, I'm glad to see squatting is taking over for bench yeah, I'm yeah, glad yeah. squat is the thing that people yeah. like doing in the gym. People don't even take the piss out of bench anymore. No, they don't actually. Like three or four years ago, people used fucking rag on benching. Like all the rotator, it's it's not like rotator rotator cuff tears anymore. It's ACL tears now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, such bad quad tendonitis. Oh, tendonitis everywhere. <laughs> um, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. It's been emotional. Is it? Yeah. End it there. I'm dying inside. <laughs>